And that basically leads into our Sword and Shield expansion speculation. Yes. So they said, at least by November, they also said by fall of 2020 for the Crown Tundra expansion for the Sword and Shield expansion. And in this Crown Tundra expansion, they're introducing Galarian versions of the legendary birds. Which Which are cool looking. (laughs) Oh, yeah. They make Zapdos into a... Chocobo. A Chocobo. Yeah, that works. (laughs) (laughs) I think it's a Roadrunner, actually, but... Yeah. Basically, all the stuff that makes sense as to a flying electric bird because that extra friction from the ground helps generate more. Got to stay grounded. Otherwise you're not very powerful. Go fig. We already know that after I believe Cresselia for legendary raids, the legendary birds are coming back for it, which Niantic tends to introduce these little subtle notes any time that the main series or the Pokemon company has something going on. Like when Pokemon Sleep was announced, they introduced Snorlax just randomly around with Yawn, which is almost a useless move, but it's one of those niche things that they wanted to have in there. Yeah. The Sun and Moon games, Ultra Sun and Moon, I believe it was, they introduced the Alolan Pokemon, had Alolan... Alolan. Alolan executors hanging around. Yep. They were drawing the first time I saw one. Took up so <laughs> much space. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of the point of them, but yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it was just funny. I was like, holy crap! What is that? Mm-hmm. And if it wasn't for Niantic going on, what's the name? Taking the week off, I would have thought that this week was the week the expansion was going to come out, but they said at least in the fall, which yeah. we're still finishing up with summer. So, yeah. so technically the fall starts, was it mid-September, November-ish? Yeah, yeah. The, I think the fall officially starts the 21st of September. 21st September. It could you. be the 20th. I can't remember which one it is. But Let's then it runs until, you know, this is why I have Google. Tuesday, September 22nd. Okay, there we go. The autumn equinox. Okay. So, yeah, the... Is that the exact... Until winter. Or where did that information go? And that fall is, runs until Monday, December 21st. Officially. Official lie. Is it really that short? <sighs> Two months, I guess. Three months? Yeah. Three months. Okay, yeah. That, that it just it always feels like they start oh, later than they yeah. should. Because, like, yeah, it, it's... does winter start the end of December? I didn't. I don't think so. <laughs> but, I, you know. It means of corporate marketing, it starts the second <laughs> Thanksgiving ends. Winter starts, but winter doesn't actually start until December 20th, 20th, something like that. And it doesn't end until at least March, March something, yeah. So yeah, that that makes sense. But yeah, and I believe that's the exact time, fall starts the exact time that the... Come on. Where... Although Nintendo did, did did say that the expansion would be out no later than the end of November. So. Yeah. No later than that. So there's the yeah. possibility so, that it could... So the end of November. <laughs> so the 18th to the 25th should be Articuno slash Zapdos, one of them, which is a nice tie-in for the Sword and Shield expansion. And what they've done in the past for stuff like this is they've released those forms early. So this is probably the fifth or sixth time that we've seen the legendary birds. 
So they may introduce the Galarian forms of them into Pokemon. I hope so. I hope so, but uh, we'll, we'll probably end up getting Galarian. Uh, oh, what else is out there? Oh, well, Galarian uh, Ponyta would be nice. Oh, yeah. That was really cool. Yep. Yeah, so. Eh. Although, you know what? Didn't we talk about Galarian Slowpoke? I feel like it's going to show up just because oh, it yeah. featured it so much. <laughs> yeah, so that'll be a definite then. So probably yeah. November or October. They'll introduce Galarian Slowpoke slash yeah, they, Shiny Slowpoke. Oh, Marco, right? That them. was the last one they did. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the legendary Galarian forms because that'll give them another run at the Reggies because there's Galarian Reggies and all that. So we'll see. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. We'll see if they introduce those legendaries as fast. But that's speculation. I'll probably wait, hold those out. Mm-hmm. I, would have, I would have to imagine, but that's just... I think we'll get the birds first. If, yeah. When we do get them. Oh, yeah, the birds are definite. They're just <laughs> Gen 1 love that they love to give out for that all. Oh, yeah. And they have really neat designs. Mm-hmm. Some of the other crazy ideas I had going on kind of ties into our PvP discussion, ties into making gyms a little more exciting or more form factor. Okay. Was in the Sword and Shield expansion, they introduce their gym comp. Their gyms are a basic, they're a competition that the entire town gets involved in, where they get excited for everything that's going on their gym is their local team or their local pride and everyone shows up to the stadium because it's one big huge event and I kind of wanted to I always wanted that the next expansion could have a larger factor for involving communities there so in the sword and shield expansion I was hoping well not just the expansion, but Pokemon in general, because I'm sure everyone's played the main series games where you go into a gym, you figure out what type it is, and then you're done, basically. Once you figure out all the other stuff, you're done. You don't have to worry about anything else. You don't have to worry about any other factors. Some of the crazy ideas I had going on was, what if you were to win the crowd? So you roll into a gym and you learn through various quests or various things going on throughout the town that this town loves furry Pokemon. They love fluffy Pokemon. They love water type Pokemon. Or they get tired of seeing the same electric type Pokemon come in and beat their team. They want to see if the competitors can actually bring in a grass type or win at a type advantage. So by bringing in those Pokemon and fighting fighting the crowd's expectations, you then win the crowd and then win the gym badge that way. Okay. So you, yeah, still, be cool. you still beat the gym the normal way, but before actually going into the gym, you learn all the things about the town, and then people talk about you to the next town or do news articles or start chanting your name every time you enter the town, stuff like that. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Because that that would give you a different meta to kind of mold your teams around. It wouldn't just be, "Uh, these these suggested six, whatever, let's go. Mm -hmm. You know? And they could even place it off of what time or season you go into. So... Okay, you're there in the morning. They like seeing the early birds or the night owls. Or yeah. they like seeing... It's really cold. They want to see some warmth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Base it off of the weather. So that's just some random little things I was thinking about in means of the Pokemon main series games to make it a little yeah. more interesting. They could even do a Detective Pikachu feel with it where they have to look for clues, solve a mystery... And they don't okay. have to 
figured out whether they solved it or not until they defeat the Pokemon and see what Pokemon the gym leader has at that time. So you gather all the clues saying that, okay, the end gym leader has a Macargo. So you then have that counter for that Macargo. That way, you don't only need to level up your Pokemon past a certain level. All the levels are normalized, and you go in and face off for the competition, not just for having something super strong and then stomping it. Right. Because anyone can just run into a field, defeat all the Weedles or Pidgeys and various other things, and go from there. There should be some strategy to the game, not just the factors that have been in the past. Got to move forward. Make the world feel alive or more of a challenge. Yeah, and have some other reason to interact with the world with the world map. Mm-hmm. Something. <laughs> Besides just clicking on Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, because everyone, granted, they all still have their base dialogue. They'll change up their dialogue once or twice if you have like a certain item or a certain Pokemon as your lead. But there's other factors that you could add in there to make the world feel more alive and more engaging. I think they should introduce the uh, the you can't escape encounters. Mm-hmm. Well, they have that with trainer battles. No, no, but I'm talking about like just uh, when you're on the world map. It would uh, make shiny hunting a little more. Like, real, do I really want to click on this guy? Like, I don't want to get stuck. I have to catch him, and then. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't know. Just a random thought that popped into my head. Probably not a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, anything's possible. I mean, I'm... anything is possible. <laughs> <laughs> it could work out. It might just be because, like, certain Pokemon already have that. So it's like a certain ability. Okay. So they could probably introduce more of that or a mechanic where if you're not over the level, then you can't leave because okay. this Pokemon might be wreaking havoc or needs to be stopped in a way. Nah, not sure. Yeah, I don't know. It could work out though. Make it... But that can be a something that restricts players that they may not enjoy so they just stop playing because they never enjoy it anyway. Or they yeah, stop that's also playing. true. They force players to do stuff. That's not a good idea. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. This is why... Well, I think I know some people that stop playing Animal Crossing at night because they got tired of having the shit scared out of them from running into a scorpion or a scorpion <laughs> showing up behind a house or behind a fence that had no purpose being there, just just for the sake of getting you. <laughs> That's why I always hide the scorpion or tarantula models around <laughs> my island. <laughs> <laughs> and that's and I feel I'm scared myself like that. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, that's right. I put that there. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> um, so the last part we're going to go into here is our augmental idea. Okay. And now I'm just adding it to any Pokemon Go post because why the hell not? Because there were some people that it's apparently it's my hot body. I do what I want. Just, <laughs> 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 we're trying to make it that way. Yeah. Um, there are some people that just, the only thing that they do is jump underneath one of Niantic's post or Pokemon Go's post and post some random information or they post their movement thing for some weird costume thing that has borderline no purpose for their own material good. So they're basically trying to get this thing so that when it actually does come out, they can say, oh yeah, we pushed that the entire time. That was us. (laughs) But yeah, so that's our job now because we're going to be pushing for avatar freedom, customization, because some people want to do an Irish theme, so they want to wear a kilt. 
Meanwhile, okay. Pokemon Go might think of that as a skirt or a dress. So take away the restriction on gender clothes. So Which if someone wants cool. to wear something like that, they can wear it. Or like I think I saw the the spark jacket or the um what's the name? It's one of the team leaders. Basically, it doesn't look so good on the male model as it looks on the female model. <laughs> and there's certain combinations that just look a lot better on both genders as they've assigned on there. As we know, gender is more of a spectrum. It's not just suited towards male, female, masculine, feminine. Give whatever breakdown you want for that. But there should be more functionality with that. I'm honestly a little tired of being a scrawny avatar in game because there's more body types than just skinny skinny sticks. Yeah. I think that it's it should be the first thing that they fix up in 2021 because that allows for players to be more attached to their avatar because in Pokemon Go we level our avatar we level our personal fitness, we level ourselves up, and the avatar should reflect that. There should be things like, okay, give us a badge in Pokemon Go for Adventure Sync. Completing 50 kilometers, do that for an entire year, or... Yeah, Adventure Sync should be based off of... based for your legs. So you should be right. able to get those tree trunks if you want them <laughs> for making sure that you continue with your adventure sync. It could even be like a ongoing streak. Okay. For me to keep my tree trunks, I need to hit that 50 kilometers every week. And that's the way I want things to go from there. There could be a, maybe a weekly or monthly bonus. Okay. Your arms could be based off of how many catches you do. So you could be rippling biceps or strong upper body for throwing more Pokeballs. Got to get You're those like, extra reps in. Do you even throw balls, bro? <laughs> <laughs> do you even lift and throw, do you throw balls, bro? <laughs> Chat, bro. <laughs> yeah. And there's just a lot more functionality and things you could do with that. And... Yeah, that's basically all I got for that. Any other thoughts? Just any, anything that gives you more customization, especially anything to, to, that lets you feel more seen in your avatar's appearance, I'm all for it. Yeah, I completely agree. The customization needs to be improved. And we'll go into this in a special video or maybe the next week's episode. But there's a game on the horizon called Alter Titan. And this Ultra Titan game basically takes your fitness, your daily fitness, and allows you to level up your avatar based off of that. So I think it's an awesome concept and an awesome way to get people engaged and motivated and towards being physically fit and being healthier. Because they're not asking you to go to the gym two to three hours a day, they're asking you to do exercise for two, two to three hours a day. That right. could be yoga, that could be running, that could be walking, basically elevating the heart rate over 100 beats per minute, depending on your size, weight, all those other factors. But yeah, basically being healthier and engaging the body towards being healthier. Healthy body, healthy mind, better play. All right. I think that's where we'll call this week's episode. Thanks All right, man. Um, anything else you wanted for everyone to learn about DJ Brad? I don't think so. I'm sure I'll think of it as soon as we end. But that'll be <laughs> for next week. Yeah, just add it to the docs <laughs> and we'll get to it. Yeah, man. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Good balls, good calls, good luck. We'll catch you in the next one.
And don't forget to follow us on whatever ways you stay social, YouTube, Twitter, or just keep listening to the podcast. We love seeing you. And if you're on, if, if you're on anchor.fm, the application, you can actually record a voice message and send it to us and we may play it on the episode. Word. All right. Catch y'all later. Been real.